Hey, uh, it's Danny with another kind of remote working tip. Uh, only this one isn't going to be so much of a tip. Uh, it's more going to be a, a tutorial, a bit of a longer tutorial. It's probably going to be about 15 minutes long or something. Um, but I'm basically going to show you how to set up a really good Notion setup for meeting notes. So this is uh, one of the views that we can have of this setup. Um, and basically various different meetings can be put in here and we can have templates set up for the meetings. Um, and I've used this successfully at a couple of places uh, and I use it now for a couple of different projects a very similar setup. Um, but each meeting, when you go into it, um, has a bunch of information about it, about like, you know, who's the facilitator and is it in the future, all this kind of stuff. Um, but it also has this kind of uses this template. So to give a bit of an overview of the stuff we're going to be building, um, the pre-work area has got uh, like the kit that you need. There's also a space to embed a couple of Loom videos. So in this example, uh, this is like a briefing on uh, a new training model. This is a quick financial update. Uh, and rather than doing those in the meeting and taking up everybody's time with with uh, you know everybody's time. Um, it makes much more sense to give those kind of briefings in advance via Loom videos that are embedded here. And this way other people can come here before the meeting, watch these, make some notes, um, and, and then any actions arising from these or any stuff needs discussing can happen in, in the meeting. Uh, there's also a space in the pre-work for any pre-reading um, with links to any, any stuff or supporting documents or whatever. Uh, and then when it comes to the actual meeting, um, there's a, a template and we can do whatever we want in here and this one's set up to have a space to crowdsource the agenda, uh, a check-in, uh, a reviewing of the last meeting which will link back to the meetings database, um, review the task board and then major items in here. Um, and then we've got an actions recap and a checkout at the end. Uh, and this is quite good because when you crowdsource the agenda, all of the people can kind of pile into this Notion page and add their, add their stuff in here. Um, and then we've got a notes section at the bottom for keeping notes of the meeting. And then on the right, we've got an area for decisions, um, for marking any kind of big decisions. And we can add new ones with this, this new decision button. Um, and, uh, and then we've got a tasks area down here for adding new tasks for people to do stuff during the meeting. Um, and then we've got a space for uploading uh, a Zoom recording, um, which is super, super useful when people wanna come back to this meeting because they can see all the decisions, like big decisions that were made here, the tasks people had to do, all the context for it, as well as kind of pre-briefings and context, and it's all here. Um, and then there's the Zoom recording if people need to dig into to some of the discussion. Uh, and then there's also a section for um, post-meeting actions for the facilitator to do afterwards to kind of tidy things up. Um, some guidelines for how to run the meeting um, and really we, we can set this template up however you want the, this has worked for me for, for a bunch of different contexts um, because this is just a notion page we, we can do a whole load of flexible stuff with it so we're going to build this from scratch um, and the, we're going to set up all the calendar stuff the formulas and whatnot um, so that's the plan um, uh, and I guess that the reason that I wanted to do uh, a slightly longer video on this was partly to, to show you how to use Notion to do this stuff, but also because um, like I, m meetings get a bad rep, right? Especially remotely, you know, I'm sure recently everyone's had loads and loads of Zoom calls and me meetings were bad enough before they were remote. And, and if, if meetings don't kind of don't kind of have good agendas and good practices kind of encoded in these agendas and this kind of tooling, um, it, it can become really, really, really difficult to like do any work because you're constantly in, in meetings. So the, the, the goal of this setup really is to make it easy to find information after meetings, but also to reduce the amount of work that happens in a meeting and crucially to make sure that the work that's happening in a meeting is the stuff that can only be done in a meeting, which is like, conversations and brainstorming and um, all, all of that stuff that can't be done uh, can't be done asynchronously. Um, it's worth noting that this kind of setup I don't use for every meeting. Um, I tend to split my meetings in, in two categories. One is agendered meetings that have something a bit like this um, and another one is non-agendered meetings and they're meant to be kind of just a general catch up and a chit chat. Um, so so I, I kind of make sure when I'm setting a meeting that we know, is it gonna have an agenda and stuff to do here or is it um, is it meant to just be a general freeform chat? Um, and 
And the template we're going to set up here, you, you could do one, and I have one in fact, that works really well for one-to-one -one meetings, um, but, but this one is designed for team meetings. So uh, let's have a look. We've got this page, um, th this kind of team area, uh, and all we're going to do to, to start off, we could put a load of stuff in here, but we're just going to put in a, a basic calendar to begin with. Um, so we're going to add in an inline calendar. Uh, and we're going to call that, um, I don't know, um, we'll call it Acme Team just to have a generic team, Ooh, a generic team name. There we are, Acme Team can, can be making money. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go and add some fields in, into this. Uh, so I'm going to just create a new entry in here. Um, we want to think about the type of fields we're going to have. Now we have to have a title. Um, it also makes sense for us to have a date. Um, and uh, we probably also want to add in uh, a created at. Uh, and there's a, a particular timestamp for that so that will just record when it was created so we know when the agendas were made and that will be filled out automatically um, it's also useful to have created by so that we know who it was that made this uh, document uh, and then we need to put in a, a few other bits and pieces so we want a facilitator and that's going to be a person so that'll be whoever's facilitating the meeting um, and then we want another field for attendees, and this will allow us to tag in uh, to tag in various attendees, so we can add more than one pe people in here. Um, I also like to add in a uh, a field for type of meeting. So most of the uh, teams that that I've used this with, we've had a, a number of different types. So there's been like regular meetings um, that happen every week. There's maybe an update in a software team. You might have a sprint planning session that happens every week, but you might also have a retro that happens every week and you might also have something else. Um, and being able to differentiate those and filter by them is really useful. So we're going to add a select in here for type. Um, and we might add in, let's, let's go with that example we had before. So we might have sprint planning. We might also have like an ad hoc meeting. We might have a retrospective and we might have a, I don't know, weekly, weekly, um, I don't know. Let's just call it weekly meeting for now, right? Um, now the other thing that I, I often like to do with this is set up a, a formula to tell us whether or not we are in the future so whether or not this this meeting is is in the past or the future and this is really useful for filtering um filtering in different views and stuff so you can choose to show only meetings in the future only meetings in the past so we're going to add in a uh, a future thing and we're going to make it a formula and then we're going to go ahead and edit the formula and i've just copy and pasted this from elsewhere but basically what it says is if the date is less than um now then put in uh, a cross um cross emoji otherwise put in a tick emoji um so if we put the date now that's in the past uh but if i change this date to be something in the future we'll see that that, that changes to a tick cool so that's the, the basic field setup um, that we wanted to do. Um, but we probably also want to add a couple of views to this, uh, which, which will help us filter the information. Um, so one of the views that uh, is useful uh, is the calendar view, which we already have here. Um, but it can also be useful to add a table view. I tend to do this with most um, with mo most of most of these things uh, and all that will do is just create a, a view of the same information um, but with kind of 
the basic information all across here. Now, looking in this view, I'm unlikely to care about this tables thing. So I'm just gonna hide uh, the attendees thing. I'm just gonna hide that so that the table just shows me the information I kind of need to, to filter it. So I probably want the date, the facilitator, whether it's in the future or not, and the type of meeting. So again, when we have this filled out, it's just a hell of a lot easier to like sort and, and filter and do stuff with meetings in here. Um, I also often like to create a list view um, for future meetings. Um, and all we're going to do in here is we're going to uh, change some properties. Same thing again. We're just going to make sure that it's got the date of the meeting um, and the type of meeting uh, is all we want in here, really. Um, and maybe the facilitator, actually. And then we're going to filter this by the future. So we're going to basically say that we only want to include meetings uh, at filter where the future contains uh, contains a check mark. Um, um, that that will make sure that this only contains future meetings. Um, so yeah, there's there's some basic filters set up, and we can see these working when we've created a few more meetings in a bit. Um, the next thing we want to do, and this is where most of the work is, is go and create uh, a template. Um, so I'm going to switch back to calendar view and then we're going to head up to this new button here and we're going to go ahead and create a new template. Um, and this template we can kind of use to build out, uh, all the various, the setup that we need basically, um, to, to get something that looks, looks like this, right? Um, and then whenever we create a new meeting, we can choose which template we'd like to use for it. Um, and it will put all this kind of infrastructure in here. So we're going to start out, uh, by opening up to page and we're going to automatically set the type of meeting to be a weekly meeting because that's the template that we're, we're going to do. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could add a load of people in here. So we could add, um, we could add a load of people into this template and then whenever you made a new template with with this, it would automatically notify them all that the new record's been done. I'm not gonna do that now because I don't wanna notify these guys. Um, I'm then gonna make this full width. Uh, and we're gonna add an emoji to this. Uh, so we'll add a calendar. Um, and now we can basically go through and start building out the page structure. So we're going to start off with a heading for pre-work. Um, um, I think we'll make that heading two and then we'll set that to have a background color of gray. Um, I just need to get some room to work here. Um, and then we're going to put in a, a bunch of columns under here. So we can have uh, kit. Mm. Heading's not working. So we want kit. We want another one for um, maybe intro loom video whatever and we're just going to drag these up uh, so that they are one beside the other um, and then we might also want one for pre-reading over here um, and then maybe if we want to replicate uh, this one entirely, we might want to put like intro loom video and then, I don't know, um, loom video two, whatever. You can put whatever you want in these basically. Um, and then here we want to put a, uh, I don't know, a note. Um,
uh, I like to make these um, italic and change the color to gray when they're kind of instructions to to whoever's filling this out um, so in here we can add a loom video and that will just add in a um, like a placeholder for it which can be useful in these templates and then in pre-reading you know we, we can be like add, add bookmarks to Again, we'll make this uh, grey. So that's the, the pre-reading section done, um, or the kind of pre-work. Um, now we want to add the actual agenda. So we'll do the same thing. We'll make this grey background. Let's try that again. Um, and then we also want to uh, we also want to add in above this or to the right of this a decisions area. So uh, decisions, and that wants to be maybe green. And we'll just drag this up to the right here so that these are on the same level. Um, so we, we've got like one column that spans the whole width for this heading. Then we've got some other columns, and then we've just got the, the rest of this is going to be in two columns. And we'll just move that to the right. Um, and then underneath the agenda, um, we can basically put in, a, you know, whatever our normal agenda is. So uh, we might start off with crowdsource the agenda. Then we might have a check-in. Anyway, we'll have a check-in. Uh, then we might want to review the last meeting. Um, it's a good idea to, in this template, link back to the actual meetings thing. So we can say review last meeting. Uh, and then we can link to the Acme team meeting calendar. Um, and then we might want to, I don't know, review the task board. And again, if you have a task board in Notion, you could link to that here. Um, uh, and then what I tend to do is have like a major items uh, area, which underneath here has, has a bunch of stuff. Uh, and this is where people will put their crowdsourced agenda items, right? So all of the things out here are, are standing items that happen every, every time. Um, and, and the stuff in here is things that change according to the meeting. Um, and then I might have next actions recap, which is always a good idea at the end of a meeting, um, and then a checkout. So that's our template agenda. Um, we can also make a heading for notes. Same deal, we're just gonna put that in here. Um, and then maybe put some instructions. Um, so now what we want to do is, uh, I'm just going to move these up actually into this column. Uh, oh, okay. I need to move all of this up into this column. So it's directly underneath agenda. Yeah, cool. Um, which gives us a better sidebar basically. Um, now what we're going to do here, we need to create a couple of areas on the right. So we've got decisions. We're going to make another one for tasks. 
and then another one for like meta and then another one for um, guidelines and I'm going to make this one yellow and same with this one Um, now, underneath this meta one, this is kind of a, a place to um, place to upload the, the video and, and it's kind of like admin -y type stuff. So um, I just put a note in here saying like, if the meeting was recorded, upload it here. And then we can put in a, uh, again, a placeholder for a video. Um, Uh, and then underneath here, I always like to include a um, like a checklist for the facilitator to run through afterwards. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in. Um, but essentially, this is this is just a checklist. The facilitator can run through straight after the meeting. So tidy up, tidy up the notes in here. And make sure it's generally all right. Move any tasks that are recorded in here uh, into wherever they need to go. Upload the Zoom recording, um, and then go back to the main calendar and create the next one of these documents from a template uh, and assign the next meetings facilitator. So maybe actually we should have over here, um, uh, agree next week's facilitator. Um, uh, and then down the bottom, there's there's some guidelines, um, and I'd suggest if you're in a team and you're doing this, uh, you know these are like group norms, I guess. So try to establish them and agree them when you start on a regular meeting cadence. Uh, but the ones we've we've got in here are essentially a, a word to call out when we're going off track. Um, so if someone shouts swordfish, that's like a signal that we're we're getting off topic. Um, it should be a safe space. Everyone should be here, and you've got to let us know. Raise your hand if you want to talk and make sure clear action items with deadlines are recorded up here. And then the last one is, is no cell phones and, and generally keep keep other apps shut. And the, these were agreed in, in a team I worked in a while ago. Um, so uh, so that's, that's the kind of meta stuff down here. We now need to deal with the tasks. Um, so this generally is just going to be a list of tasks, right? We'd like remember to do you know, remember to do X or I don't know, whatever it is. And it should have in it a person assigned, which you can tag in like that, but it can also have a due date with, um, can you do that? No, um, a due date with like the 1st of July. Um, maybe not, how do you do dates? Uh, Okay, American dates, great, seven, one. So we can put a date in like that next Wednesday, right? Um, and that will set up uh, a reminder if I click on this and choose to add a reminder here. Um, I can have me reminded when it, when this comes up. Um, but this is super useful because it allows you to see, um, to kind of see what, what reminders and what dates you, you've got set up here. So uh, we want to put in a, um, a note so that people know to do this. Um, so we can just put a note in at the top there, um, record the meeting actions here and let's just change that to be great. Um, and so this is where folks can come and add their actions. So that's that bit sorted. Um, and then there's this decisions bit, which is something that, uh, we, we started doing with, with, with one particular team after, um, after it got um, basically decisions were getting lost, right? Um, and, and I think one of the really good things about having a specific area inside your, your agenda template for, for decisions is that you can, it, it forces you to like really think, hang on, is this an actual important decision we're making? And obviously in a lot of meetings, there'll be loads of tiny, tiny little decisions that get made that probably don't need recording. But there are certain decisions where you kind of want to be like, hang on, did we just make a decision? Is there consensus that that's definitely what we're doing? Can we all agree to it being like a big decision? And if so, then let's add it up here. Um, and so, again, we want to put a little bit of explanatory text in here. Um, 
explaining what it's all about. Uh, and then what we want to do is add in a template button. Okay, so we're going to add a template button. Um, and, and you'll see how this works um, a little bit later on. But we essentially want to give it a title that's like new decision. And then in here, instead of a checklist, we're going to put in a call out block. And we're going to give it a hammer emoji because it's kind of like a gavel. And we're going to say decision and then bold that. And what this will do, um, as we press this, it will create a new block for us formatted like, like we just did um, in, in that template. Uh, and so this makes it really easy for us to add new decisions. Um, and these are just blocks that you can move around and change, right? Um, once they're created, they're not bound by the template. But this is a super easy way of doing that. You know, we could do something similar for, for this to create a new task. We'd, we'd just say, um, uh, we'd add a template button with just a checklist, but it kind of seems a bit pointless considering pressing enter automatically makes a new task. Um, but you, you could play with the, that template button thing there. Um, and so there we are. That's basically our, uh, our first template um, set up. So if we head out of this now, um, and we want to create a new meeting, let's say we're making one for this Wednesday, I can hit that plus and I can then come down and hit this this thing here. Actually, we should rename that from untitled. We should rename it to uh, weekly meeting. So we can create a new record, open it up and down here we I don't know why it still says untitled there. We can um, hit that button and it will use this as the template. Um, and then we can come in here, do whatever customizations we want. So if I know in this meeting, everyone's also going to need to bring pens or something. And then I could record a Loom video, upload it in here, introduce in the meeting, um, add bookmarks and stuff in here. Um, and and I'm good to go, basically. Um, and and this is now separate from the template, is use that template to create a new record. And this is where we can record all of this stuff in here. Um, and so at the end of a meeting, you'd expect to see a, a YouTube video in here. You'd expect the facilitator to have ticked these all off. Um, you'd expect these these bits to, to have been created. Um, and when it comes to weekly meetings, I tend to just name them uh, with like an ISO standard date um, because unfortunately you can't have records without um without a title so i tend to just do what date was this on june 22nd i tend to do do this for weekly meetings now with all this stuff done if we wanted to we could go back and we could create uh another template um so we could head up here duplicate that template and we could call this one Sprint Planning. And then we'll change the type of meeting to be a Sprint Planning meeting. Um, we'll probably not have any of this pre-work in here because Sprint Planning sessions probably wouldn't need that um, kind of thing because they don't tend to have a lot of updates in them. Um, but maybe we will have some pre-work that's like uh, review and clean up task board, um, close, close all outstanding issues. I don't know, whatever stuff you normally do uh, during sprint planning. Uh, and then in here, we'd have a, a radically different agenda, right? We, we, we wouldn't have crowdsource agenda we'd probably still want to do a check-in um we'd maybe want to have a uh i don't know product manager talk about the sprint goal that's something that could maybe be done by a loom video right um and then we could have maybe agree a 
degree sprint goal. And then, I don't know, whatever. We'd have like a bunch of stuff, different stuff to go through here. Um, and if we had a task board, if we had a Notion task board that we were using, we could embed that in here, in, in this template. Um, decisions, possibly still useful. So maybe we want to leave that in there, right? Um, tasks might still be useful. Maybe leave that. Um, and then these things, you know, maybe we want to edit them or something. Maybe we'd, um, maybe we'd want to have uh, links out to task boards and epics and stuff in here. I don't know. But the point is, depending on the type of meeting, we can set up uh, different templates to, to help us with all those. Um, so if I just go ahead and rename this to... Um, weekly meeting. Um, uh, why is that not working? <laughs> Let's try again. Yeah, heaven knows. Don't know why I can't rename that. Um, but the point is, I've got these two things here, and actually, maybe it makes sense for sprint planning sessions to have a running person on it. Um, and the nice thing about that is if we go in here and we make this one into a sprint planning session. Yeah, oh, I don't know why. A template. Oh, it's because I've already created it, right? Ah, uh, oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm accidentally not editing the template. I'm making new records. Cool. So let's change this to weekly planning. And then we'll edit this one. And change this to be someone running. And I'm actually just going to go back in and edit this to remove uh, these two decisions here. Cool. Um, so there we are. If I go ahead and create a new meeting now on July the 1st, I can give it a title. Um, and ooh, uh, 2020 07 01. Um, and I can then choose, all right, well, what type of session is it? If it's a sprint planning session, I can press that button and it will update it. It will update the type for me um, and put in put in all that, that new template. So there we are. Um, that's kind of how this works. And if we head over to table view, we're probably going to see millions of records that I accidentally created earlier on. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of some of them. Uh, let's keep... Let's get rid of them. And we'll just keep those two that we had in there. Um, so there we are. That's how to make a calendar. Now, the nice thing about this, if we go back to the uh, Acme team area, this is just a page with um, uh, with one element in it. But but we've got like, you know, this is a Notion page where we can put a, a whole bunch of other stuff we want in here. So what I've often seen is that teams will, will kind of have up here, they'll have like an area for um, for like, you know, what we do. They might have like, uh, I don't know, current priorities or something. Um, all, all sort of listed up here. And then down the bottom of the page, maybe under some kind of separator is like, is this, this team calendar down the bottom. But what we can do if we want is create, a, um, is create a, an embedded view of this database. So uh, So if I say, all right, let's have, a section for upcoming meetings and we'll put that over here on the right and then we'll put these in here and then what we want here is like a list of all of the meetings that we've got coming up in this team and this is just one example of the kind of stuff you could do so uh, we're going to add a link database and it's going to be at me meeting calendar and that's going to show the the table view and then we want to come in here 
um, and add a new view, which we'll call upcoming. We'll make it a list. Uh, and then we'll filter this by whether or not the thing is in the future. So this will only show future meetings. And then we can also come in here and sort it by date. Uh, descending, I guess. No, ascending. Yeah, cool. Um, so that will sort it by date in terms of which, which one's next. Um, and, and there we are, we've kind of got this, uh, this little area on the right, which will just update itself with all of the future meetings that we've, we've got coming up. Um, and so yeah, this, this kind of setup is, uh, is super useful for keeping people, um, keeping people on board basically, um, and, and keeping people aligned on like meetings and, and what's expected. It also helps to keep meetings short and in my experience makes them a hell of a lot more useful. Um, I have got a few tips for how to use these things, uh, uh, these templates when you're in a meeting. So um, obviously if you're the facilitator, your job is to like make a new record and then come through, record the Loom videos, um, put a brief intro from you as a facilitator, perhaps explaining the purpose of the meeting and everything. Um, it's also a good idea to try and crowdsource this agenda before we get to this point in the meeting. So if you can do that via uh, Slack messages or, or via sending a link to this out to everyone being like, hey, we've got a meeting tomorrow. Can you put your agenda items in, please? It'll save time in the meeting. Um, and, and obviously any stuff pre-work pre that um, people need to do. One of the other things I often do um, in in this part is is also add in stuff people need to have open, especially if you're going to be referencing a lot of different documents and stuff during the meeting. Uh, and you know that people ought to have them open and be logged into Google or whatever to be able to see them. Um, that can save a little bit of time. Um, and then, yeah, uh, just before the meeting, obviously make sure everyone's got the link to this document, ping it in Slack or whatever. Um, if you're facilitating and running this meeting, I'd highly recommend using two screens so that you can have one screen with everyone's faces on so you can see everyone in the meeting and then a second screen with this document up so that you can see where everyone's typing and work through it. It's a hell of a lot easier than having to switch between them. Um, and ideally, everyone else in the meeting would also have that same setup. So everyone would have two screens, one with people's faces, one with this document, and they can, they can therefore participate fully in the meeting while also adding notes to the document and, and whatnot. Um, and, and I guess the other thing, someone should work out how to make notes well. This space down the bottom is super useful, although we're recording it on Zoom probably. It's, it's uh, it, you know, if you're trying to facilitate a large or complex meeting, it's often not possible to do that and take notes. So maybe you need to ping, ping someone to be a note taker or bring someone along to do that. Um, in some, in some smaller meetings, it works really well if there's only three or four of you and you'll get on really well, where you all just kind of take turns writing the notes. And because you can all see each other and you can see what's being written in Notion in real time, uh, you can you can kind of, you, you can do a good enough job of taking those notes collaboratively. Um, and then after a meeting, we've kind of run through that already. Um, you know, cre create the next regular meeting in the calendar, basically run through this this checklist to get everything, everything wrapped up and ready. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that, that was quite a long video um, and we've covered a whole bunch of stuff in it. We've covered a load of stuff about meetings, but we've also looked at loads of Notion features. We've looked at template buttons, we've looked at database templates, calendar views, link database views and stuff. Um, I'm probably going to make a bunch more videos on this kind of stuff uh, soon. Um, I'm probably, I'm probably going to do a few smaller ones where we cover like one Notion function and how to use it really well. Uh, but if you're interested in Notion and not used to using it, there's tons of videos out there on YouTube already explaining how to do that stuff. Um, so there we are. Uh, I'm putting some of um, my videos up on YouTube at the moment as well. So uh, if you use YouTube, then head over to that URL and hit the subscribe button uh, because more subscribers means I'm going to make more things like this.